Joe Rivers Casino, on this camp taxidermy. Joey, on a debella. That's all he went. About 300 or so. Debella, debella, on a debella. Joey! Get out of town! Hey. hey, welcome to Pittsburgh Sports Talk. I'm Tank Tantlinger. If you love your Steelers, if you love your Pirates, your Penguins, and your Panthers too, you've come to the right place. Because every week on Pittsburgh Sports Talk, we're going to tell it like it is, baby. If the blocking ain't there for Big Ben, we're going to talk about it. If the scoring isn't there from the Penn's third line, we're going to talk about it. And on occasion, well, every week, the guys from Benson's Berg are going to give their comedy takes. Let's take a look at one of these clips right now. These guys are crazy. Look at this. Brains, brains, brains. Your problem. Pistol on his arm, he just ripped off Joe Bendel's head. No. Oh, it doesn't matter. Who's this Jack? Oh, dude, check it out. Oh, dude, I saw this old man for his food one time. What he's doing right now shouldn't be that much of a shock to anyone. But coach, he ripped his arm off. He's cool. I drink with my left arm. I, I'm, I'm going to lay down now. <laughs> take care, man. Wait, coach, you can't leave. The city's full of zombies. Yeah, it's not like there's a tunnel under the river to take us to safety. Honorado. Oh, Jeez. Probably came from Cleveland. The city's full of them. Honorados? Zombies. National Football League is a dangerous place. Oh no, it's like they got Tomlin too. Oh, coach, you ain't a zombie, are you? No, I, I Maybe you're sick. Don't know Test, that that is. Coach, what do you think of the mistake on the lake? Cleveland. I love it. Um, He's gone. He's a goner. Coach, you ain't gonna eat it, sorry. I mean, I expect that from James Harrison, but I like you, coach. You got class. Oh, uh, first, let's see who's healthy. Coach, um, if you're trying to eat somebody, I'd say. Yeah, we've got two candidates there. Coach, he's on. We just ripped off Tim Benz's head. Tim Benz! Uh, at this point, we can call him questionable. <laughs> yeah, Coach, looks like he's day to day. Burn his freaking horse! You just shot Zombie Tomlin! I thought he was a Cleveland Browns fan! Those jagoffs make me laugh every single week, and they'll make you laugh too if you turn into Pittsburgh Sports Talk and watch the show. See a little bit of me, the tank, see a little guys at Bensonsburg, and on occasion, You'll see famous athletes like Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, Teak Tacolvi, Penguins, Pirates, and Steelers too. Watch this. I'm here now with golf course architect, a guy named Jack Nicholas, who has built how many courses now in Mexico? I think 22. Wow. Wow. 22 golf courses in Mexico. Now Jack's found his way into the Yucatan Peninsula near Mereda. Beautiful. Let's talk about the Jaguar course you've created and this great, friendly, safe atmosphere in Merida. Well, Merida's, Merida's a nice place. I used to come down here duck hunting 40 years ago with my, my kids, or 30 years ago. And, uh, uh, you know, I spent a little bit of time here, and then, and then all of a sudden, yeah, we've got a golf course here. It's kind of it's neat. It's a pretty town, and, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a nice area. It's, uh, it's a, yeah, it's kind of nice to be able to do that. It is. They're great people here. You've got to come down in the Yucatan Peninsula. Jack, it's a safe, beautiful city that is about 10, 20 minutes from this golf course. A lot to do in Moretta. But the course itself, like you said before, every hole is a signature hole. Well, I hope so. I and mean, that's, that's, that's just what they hired me for. You know, and Jack keeps building courses not only in Mexico but throughout the world. And just you love the design aspect of the game, yeah? Well, we're, we're, we're doing golf courses all over the world. I think the Olympic movement is a big thing right now. It's, uh, it's, it's brought golf into places that you wouldn't have expected golf to come so soon, such as China, uh, which just started, but it just exploded in China and India, Brazil, where they're going to be playing the Olympics uh, in 2016. Uh, the, they don't have a public facility in Brazil. They'll have several public facilities by the time of the Olympics. Uh, it's, it's amazing to see uh, the game grow, and the game is, growing, game is growing rapidly in Mexico. Mexico's got great weather, they've got great land, uh, and uh, you know we're, we're, we're blessed to be able to uh, be able to be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's why golf is growing so much in Mexico. Jack's come down here. He's a you're you're a great guy by all accounts, and you've opened well, thank up. Thank you. Yeah, you know, and he's opened up to the game to people that maybe never had a chance to experience game, maybe watched you on television, but that's what the game of golf is: making new friends, bringing new people into the game, yep. and that's what Nicholas Design has helped do. So I'd like to show you a couple images right now from your career okay. and just what memories they bring back to you. 
it, your initial thought on that picture right there? Well, that's the on the Swilkin Bridge in uh, 2005, uh, saying goodbye to the game of golf. Goodbye. Why would why would it be goodbye? I mean, well, you're I so involved. I, ha I haven't had it. I haven't had a tournament golf. That's yes, it. sir. I yeah. haven't I haven't had a uh, competitive round since then. So it's uh, that's been five years. I'll play you for 20 bucks after this. Okay. Well, you, you, you're, you're, you'll be in good shape. I need three aside. Uh, I, I need eight aside. <laughs> Well, this great picture from the uh, That's the 17th Masters. hole of the Masters in 86. What are you feeling there? Well, I'm feeling the ball went in the hole. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be having my putter in the air and be, be excited about that if it, uh, the, ball was, the putter the ball was in the hole because that put me in, in the lead for the first time uh, uh, all week. A 30 on the back nine at Augusta is incredible. You play a different game of mental golf than the average hacker like I do. Can you describe where you were mentally during that back nine? Well, you know, I, there wasn't anybody expecting me to win the golf tournament, including myself. But once, uh, once I started doing some things, uh, you know, I remembered what I needed to do. And you know, I, it, hasn't been, it hadn't been that long since I'd won a golf tournament. And uh, uh, to go down the back side, I had my son with me, Jack, my son Jack with me. And, you know, I tried to make birdie 9, a birdie 10, a birdie 11, I messed up 12, but maybe that sort of got me going a little bit more than because I birdied 13, then of course I made eagle at, at, at 15, birdied 16, birdied 17, and you know, that, that turns out to be a pretty good score when you, when you make that many birdies, and the, uh, you made a good, really good par at 18, so, you know, the whole thing was uh, uh, exciting, I remembered what, remembered what to do, remembered how to do it, and, and, and able, not only remembered how to do it, I was able to do it. And that was, uh, that was what was so thrilling. The pressure of Championship Sunday at Augusta has, it's made men melt under that pressure, but you embraced it at that, uh, at that point. That, that's what we live for. Yeah, man. And you know, everybody says, what about the pressure? I said, well, why do we practice all the time to get, to get ourselves in the position to be in that pressure? That's what we like, that's what we want to be. Yeah. That's, that's the fun, that's, that's, that's the excitement and the fun of it. Not to fold up. No, yeah. no you, you, that, that's no good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now this last picture I'm going to show you is a, not not too many people see it that often, but I'm just a little bit curious about what you remember from that picture. Was it Arnold and Bay? Yeah. At Palm Springs, they used to have a, sort of a jam session after all the rounds at Palm Springs, and this was kind of one we were we were Arnold and Ashley were both going to, going to the men's room, and we came back and, and we brushed by this lady who had this wig on, <laughs> and we, this poor lady had blew, it knocked it right off her onto the floor, and I think I took it off and put it on Arnold's head. And then Arnold took it off and put it on my head, and we went out and danced. Oh God! And Did was, the lady ever get the wig back? That's well, she got she got the wig back, but she was mortified. I promise you. <laughs> We're good. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come to Merida, Mexico. It is safe. It is friendly. Play the bear, man. See if you can beat them. Yucatan Country Club. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Bendel. Check us out each week on Pittsburgh Sports Talk. Fun, excitement, and a whole lot of sports talk. We'll be breaking down everything in the city and beyond. Oh, he's a genius. He's a sports talk genius. Every week, fun, sports, excitement. Did Let's you say fun? Play. Hey, he wants me. I, well, I think I want him. Jake Gruber. He got kicked out of Franco's army when he napalmed some Clevelanders. Jack Gruber. He tried to sex a reporter, but he claimed he was Mike Tomczak. Jack Gruber. And he sent them to his grandma's phone. Jack Gruber. Jack Gruber, Big Ben's got a bomb on him and we only got 30 seconds. Who would want to kidnap our starting quarterback? Well, if the bomb were set to implode, I would have suspected a Browns fan. Looks like they left a ransom note. It's signed, Charlie B. Hmm, appears to be a whole batch of spelling errors, but not a single clue. Ben, you really let a lot of us down this time. Jack Gruber, leave him alone. He's already served his suspension. Talking about the mullet, Tam. You're our poster boy and a whole reason for keeping the party in the back. Jack Gruber, you said the same thing when the buckos cut Draven. Those allegations are reckless and false, Five Donnie. Five Jack Gruber. Tammy, give me that tape. Donnie, pass me the scissors. Be careful, Jack Gruber. Only cut the red wire. If you cut the blue one, you'll- I ain't cutting the wires, Tam. Cutting years of hard work and dedication. Thought I could trust you, Big Ben. Don't do it, Jack Gruber. Jack Gruber. 
every week on Pittsburgh Sports Talk. We're going to talk Penguins, we're going to talk Pirates, and we're going to keep it real, baby. None of this corporate TV, none of this corporate radio. Every week we want to talk to you like Pittsburghers do. We're going to say yuns and we're going to say ain't, and we're going to talk about the things you care about. It's the Tank and Teak show right now. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Now we saw a couple weeks ago, I don't know if you saw the report that came out that said even though our buckos are fighting for some respectability that the numbers broadcast wise across the country people are watching the buckos yeah it uh you know it was amazing when we saw that that our, our fsn numbers were very very good it was you know well above of all people, the uh, I believe it was the Dodgers numbers. You know, actually, and they're in the playoffs, and you know, just got eliminated last night. So, yeah, there is still a lot of interest in pirate baseball in in Western Pennsylvania and in the area. So, uh, yeah, that's the good sign. But you know, you you can't ask these people to hang on forever. You need you know need to be able to put a product on the field that they can be proud of again, and you know, hopefully that process will begin starting on opening day. All these boring sports talk shows where they don't take your opinion into consideration. Every week we're going to be at a bar, restaurant, or tavern, and we're going to talk to you, the Steelers fan, the Penguins fan, the Pirates fan, and we're going to find out what's on your mind. We're going to sit down, we're going to talk about it, we're going to have some fun too, because sports is fun. Heck, we might even let you whack me in the face with a walleye from Woolies. If the Pirate Parrot thinks the recent troubles of third-party candidate Steely McBeam will take the attention away from him, Think again, Mr. Parrot. The voters have not forgotten about the Parrot's drug problems in the 1980s. The Parrot's campaign found its financing from a pierogi race betting scheme. Who was responsible for this illegal slush fund? His running mate, Captain Jolly Roger. Mr. Parrot, this burg needs only one bird. Uh, paid for by the Iceberg OA Committee and Pence fans everywhere. Pittsburgh Sports Talk is about having fun, talking with you, the fans, and, well, the guys from Benson's Berg showing every week to show us a little bit what's on their crazy minds, too. Get ready, Yins Jags, for the Berg's other casino. It's the new Joe Rivers Casino. And discount taxidermy. Hey, Pittsburghians all like gambling? Well, Atlantic City and Las Vegas both have gambling. Screw them! They're jagoffs. That's right, Pittsburgh. Screw them. And go to where the real action is. In Joe Rivers' basement at the new Joe Rivers Casino. And discount taxidermy. You shoot it, I stuff it. While he's stuffing your dead elk, stuff your wallets with more ways to satisfy your suppressed Pennsylvanian gambling needs. We got blackjack, we got Texas hole, we got Plexico shoot them, we got Pittsburgh hole. All right, here we go. First river, second river, and third river. We got some of the highest stakes in the burg. Oh, you got a drink? Drink it up, Dave, come oh, on. World-class catering and cuisine. The city paper gave two stars way up. These pierogies will not get the camera out of our face. Courtesy of my wife, Tammy, she makes a main plate of Mrs. T's pierogies. Hey, babe, give me another iron, will you? <laughs> I ain't getting you no more iron until so you finish that plate of Mrs. T's. Yeah. Excuse me, Mrs. Rivers, could I uh, trouble you for a vodka martini with a sprig of Drink blood? up, you wuss. You want to play with the high rollers? You come to the right Let's place. Let's throw in. I'm all in. Oh, I guess it's my turn. All right, guys, round two. Let's do this. Let's go. This really is a great game we play here, guys. I mean, I can't tell you. <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome! <laughs> yeah! With nightly games of Northside Roulette and the most legal games in town, Joe Rivers has everything but a gambling license. <laughs> Joe Rivers Casino. No, we don't have a gambling license, but the Pennsylvania Gaming Board won't find us anyway. Joe Rivers Casino, located in the heart of Coriopolis, one block from the Kogos. Come down this Wednesday and see the Clark's cover band, the Steves. Come on down, I dare you. Come on down. So you know what to do. Snap on that chin strap. Tape up those ankles, tape up those wrists, and get ready every weekend for Pittsburgh Sports Talk. Yay!
Get ready. We're coming.